welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you once again, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are back for game six, Nate. And despite all your pessimism, we still have Celtics basketball to watch here. Nice reverse jinxes, though, by Nate on the last show. Uh, we are looking at best bets in this one. Also have a player props video for you. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page and continue to follow along as we are bringing you uh, videos for each and every one of these games remaining as we move forward. Also want you to head to the lines.com. Check out all the uh, content we're throwing up on the site right now and use that odds finder tool, a nice chart right there in front of you to see all the odds available to you from all these sports books that are continuing to give us bets this postseason. We're looking at game six, like I said, Nate, but real, real quick looking at game five. Some trouble betting on that one uh, as the Heat just did not come to play. It looked really, really difficult for them to score. Uh, so we're moving on to this one where we've got a few best bets, as we say. So let's kick it off with your first one for the night, Nate. Don't let us win one. That's what they, they keep saying uh, down in Boston. Yeah, quite a scene there, but I mean, I'm just banking on Miami not playing that poorly offensively or really just not being that unaggressive. Uh, so Miami to score 105, maybe you can get at 104 at some books, minus 114 at FanDuel for their team total. Uh, I mean, Jimmy Butler in particular, just not being aggressive in that game. He basically, you know, after, you know, looking all sly, like he was going to blow up and every every analyst saying like, expect Jimmy to try to shut the door here. He basically showed up as if, he was like a ringer on his buddy's rec league team who was like, yeah, I could I could score a bunch if I want, but whatever. I'm just going to keep dumping it down to Bam in the, in the post. Like, maybe that was the game plan to some degree. If so, like, I trust Eric Spolstra and his staff to, you know, really, really good coaching staff to just completely change things up and, and you know, get him the ball on the move, get their, get their other guys going in some ways and not really use Bam in that way, which he's not ever really used as. is like a back-to-the-basket center um so i mean yeah the celtics played good defense they had a lot of uh momentum at their back there at home finally got a key home win but i i mean they can still play good defense and give up 105 the heat are gonna see some positive regression from three after these last two um you know the last two games 31 percent from deep versus 54 percent the last when they went back home in game three uh, they're shooting 36% if you want to like split the difference at home in these playoffs and averaging 111 points per game. Uh, so Gabe Vincent being out would obviously hurt this this call, but Duncan Robinson and Haywood Highsmith, both really good offensive ratings in game five. Uh, they were at least aggressive in, in trying to earn more minutes going forward and, and trying to be, you know, fill that void with Vincent out. But there's an out, there's a pretty good chance I feel like Vincent comes back after missing one the way Jimmy did mm-hmm. in the Knicks series. There's also a, an outside chance Tyler Hero plays, right? He's been cleared yeah. to, to practice at least. Uh, maybe he gets out there for 15 minutes or so and gives them some offense. And I don't, I just don't see the Heat winning this game, um, you know, in the 90s, the way we saw sometimes last year. Even that game, game seven in Miami, <clears throat> was played at a 97 pace that they lost. Um, game five in Boston somehow at an 84 and a half pace. And that's part of why the heat were, you know, below a hundred for a second straight game. But I think that has more with just Jimmy not being aggressive and their offense has to flow off of that. And if he's just going to stand around at the three point line being like, all right, I'm just trying to feed, feed the entry pass. Uh, You know, obviously there's not going to be a lot of, a lot of pace and a lot of scoring, but I think coming back home, they, they understand they have to score with the Celtics team to a degree now that they've figured things out and that they're, they're launching threes at the degree they are. So that's where I'm going in terms of a team bet. I, I hear you. I mean, so much to, to unpack because game five was like a very telling. Starting with Jimmy, my very first thought is like, if the Heat score 105, Jimmy's scoring 30. But, and, and, and at the very least, he's taking more than 10 freaking shots which was wild and painful to watch to be honest because like you said watching this team go through bam was painful like i i love bam but if his if your offense is predicated on get him the ball in space after a pick and roll around the middle of the floor so he can either put up a floater or a mid-range jumper 
come on, man. Like we gotta be, <laughs> it's gotta be better than that right now. And and I would hope that they rectify that to your point. The thing that, that does scare me about this that I just want to mention is like, I, I think, you know, by now that I'm consistently looking at this stat of, of contested field goals, how contested a field goal is and nerding out on how far away the dearest defender is for some of these shots. But it's, I think it's pretty telling that the, the, through the first three games of this series, the the um the Heat were getting fifty five uncontested field goals per game fifty five as a team I mean they were shooting like ninety ninety two but like come on, you know that that's that's a lot of un- that's more than half that where there's no one within uh, four to six feet of you and and in these last two they've had thirty each of these two games thirty uncontested field goals like that's just because the Celtics are deciding to play defense the other thing for um you know I think points though in your favor here is like. I think the the understanding that Malcolm Brogdon was not Malcolm Brogdon, that he's probably got something really wrong with his arm, which is pretty crucial for shooting a basketball, um, that they've sort of re- rectified the fact that he was in there taking up a lot of minutes, hoping that, you know, the team hoping that he would still be the same Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, I just bring that up to say, like, him being out is helpful for the Heat scoring with some of their guards that definitely, you know, would have trouble getting by uh, as good of a defender and as big of a defender as Malcolm Brogdon. Um, and, and then also, you know, knowing that, like, the other guys who are now on the floor for the for the Celtics, especially Derek White, getting so many three point shots, being just on fire. Like when Derek White gets this, this way, he's just hot. So uh, I know I'm talking about Celtics players scoring, but I, I do think there's going to be some points. I get a little bit worried looking at the way that it slowed down to that 87 and a half as well. Um, but you know, I, I tried this bet last time, and I'm probably just a little bit salty that they couldn't get 104 points uh, in that last game. So I'm, I'm happy to let you take this one, and I'm not really disagreeing with and you. And I expected uh, Jimmy to get on. 30 last time, and and I think both things are going to round back into form because yeah, for whatever reason, he just didn't decide that it was the time or place for him to try to get 30. He just was like, all right, we don't have it in this first quarter. Thank you for, for interrupting me to bring that up because the other point that I want to make before I move on, that's super long winded is that if you're going to take Jimmy to, to, if they're going to take the heat to get these points, I would probably throw Jimmy in there as well with with a little part, same game parlay in some places uh, for him to get a certain amount of points. You could probably even just take it at 25 and the heat to get there over um, and, and feel good about that. I mean, obviously, it'll be like pretty not juicy. It'll be somewhere in the minus 200s for him to get 25 since his prop itself is at 27 and a half, 28 on some books. But um, but either way, like I would throw him in there to juice things up for, for the, the Miami Heat total there because there's just no way that he could take 10 field goals and, and them get that that number so uh, my first bet here Nate is Derek White and I know you're going to talk about him in that play a props video but I, I wanted to get cute for a minute and that's why I'm bringing it up and, and it's stupid of me to bring it up right now because I, I don't know how much I, I actually prefer like a number of other bets that I have including in the player props video over this one but I'll just say like the, the rebounds and assists for Derek White is five and a half it's minus 115 on points bet um, I actually think I might prefer, I'll, I'll figure this out here before uh, Jack needs to put a graphic up, I promise. But uh, the, the 19 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for him, like the, I'm trying to like get cute and be like, well, what if he doesn't score as much anymore? Because he was the leading scorer of last game, which was absurd and probably some astronomical number if it was available to bet. Um, and But, you know, I think he the fact that he actually had the most uncontested field goals of anybody on, on the floor um, and twice as many as any Heat player, by the way, he had 11 uncontested field goals. He hit eight of them and good for him. Like he should, he was feeling it and there was, they were all in rhythm. Um, and, and, and none of them were really contested. Like I said, so, um, you know, for him to get the points, rebounds and assists is still even money on points bet. Like why get overly cute and just do the rebounds and assists when in fact he actually hasn't gotten the six rebounds and assists in the postseason uh, against this team in the first five games. But in the regular season, he got the rebounds and assists all four games. He got the uh, the assists, which is uh, even money as well. If you want to take it for three, he got that three of four. And the thing that correlates here to why it could happen in this game is, I mean, come on, Spoh's got to be able to realize that, like, yo, you can't leave Derek White wide open. I understand that you need to close out as hard as you can on Jason Tatum. Probably don't need to ho- close out that hard on Jalen Brown when he's standing behind the three-point line right now. He just airballed one last game, if you'll recall. Uh, but, you know, for those two guys, like, don't just sell out and leave Derek White. Like, guard Derek White from three before you guard Jalen Brown from three right now. So, with that in mind, like, I do think he might become a little bit more of a facilitator. The other thing is, like, he played 37 minutes in this game because there was Malcolm Brogdon playing seven. And I think you got to continue to expect that from him. He's picked it up back up, back up on defense, I should say, because he has been a good defender this year, and he just wasn't for 
for a few games uh, in that Knicks series. It wasn't a great series for him, and he played poorly, uh, but he is coming back nicely now. I think it's a great time to get him on any way that you want to bet this. But like I said, maybe we don't get overly cute. We just take the points, rebounds, and assists because you get it even money. And I do think there's the likelihood that he gets three assists and three rebounds, let's say, right? I think that is very, very possible, at least with the, the number of minutes that he's playing at this point. But I don't need to like try to guess too hard on that when I'm getting good juice for him to, to add the points in there as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm following the minutes with that. But yeah, to this point, he just hasn't done it with peripheral stats. He's been a scorer. And I think if you're betting 20 PRA, you might as well just bet his 14 points because he's going to have to do the bulk of that by scoring. Um, and it, it's not like Spolster is leaving him open by design. Maybe there was some of that with Marcus Smart uh, the last couple games and he made them pay. I mean, that was the guy they were doubling off to get to Tatum. White's getting his threes because the Celtics are actually driving and kicking like they have all season to a good degree. I mean, three plus threes in every single game in this series, that's not necessarily one game plan or the other. And that's why, you know, I'm including him in this parlay here uh, for White to hit two threes, for Tatum to hit two threes, and Jimmy, Jimmy to hit two threes. So some of that stuff you were talking about in terms of, you know, he's got to step up, he's got to score 30. I'm not sure how much he's going to actually score, but I know he has to hit some jump shots because the Celtics are going under every screen and they're giving him space. Like like I said, he's just chilling at the perimeter, thinking about how he wants to dime in. Like, you can take a three anytime you want, Jimmy. And I'm sure he's going to look at that and realize, you know, he's got to take more than the two threes he took last game, 10 field two. goals in general. He hasn't taken many at all since he went two for four in the opener in this series. But as we saw down the stretch against Milwaukee he was suddenly in fuego I mean in fact the final four where they won three of those four he averaged three threes per game at nearly 50 percent um in game six and seven against Boston last year he hit five threes in those famous missed three in game seven that would have made it two for that game and maybe would have sent the heat to the finals so if you add up the final three games of these last few series here he, he's hit 28 threes, so like seven threes per game. I mean, excuse me, four threes per game. I, I, I can't do math right now. He's shooting 41%. He's hit 28 threes <laughs> in the final three games of four different series. I'm, I'm throwing out the Knicks where he had that issue. Uh, but late in the series, I think he starts to understand as that's the way they're guarding him, he's going to hoist. So his, his odds are plus 310 to get the three. And that's why I I kind of want to rotate around that. I mean, I think you could just bet that if you think that's the logic, but to get, you know, get white in there with the way Brogdon's been just like put on ice slash injured. He might not play at all. Uh, I think that's one of your safest bets. I mean, he's shooting 47% from deep on the road in these playoffs. I don't know if I'm, if I want to take the, the, uh, the bait on smart after he's been so hot lately. I think he's more of an erratic three point shooter And Tatum also is way more perimeter oriented on the road where defenses are able to hand check him, right? Where it's harder to score in the paint. And he's like, all right, I'll just settle for my step back. So since last year, big sample size here, he's hitting three and a half threes on the road, taking nine versus seven and a half at home that he's attempting. Um, And, you know, he had four plus threes, all three in Atlanta. He had two plus in all four at Miami last year in this Eastern Conference Finals. So I that's what my logic there for taking those three guys, which, by the way, is a nice plus 460, even with the odds kind of fluctuating there, because Jimmy's getting you such good juice. Yeah, no, I, I, I that's very juicy for that. Um, and I think it's actually because of the fact that Jimmy only took the two last game, right? I think he's the one that, put, like you said, I, you, you indicated, he's the one that is actually the, the most in jeopardy. You get the most juice for him to do that. Uh, Derek White's three-point prop is at two and a half. So you, you already know uh, that they're expecting a few more from him. And and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to throw a he and Tatum in there. I hope Tatum still goes to the rim the way he has been because God damn, when he does that, like he's it looks, he looks like Kevin Durant. He looks impossible to stop. Uh, when, when he, when you realize he's six foot 10 with that level of quickness and handle, man, like I, I, I hope he keeps doing that. He's going to need a few more like longer range shots either way, whether they're from the mid range or from the three uh, in, in this game, I think especially the mid range, uh, he's going to need to continue to hit that shot, which he looked comfortable with for the first time in a while in, in game five. Uh, so kudos to him. But 
I'm going to switch gears a little bit here because I was looking at this and I was like, you know what? This video is called Best Bets. And I've just really, uh, really confirmed for myself that I think Denver <laughs> wins this title, wins the title no matter what, um, because I, I played it out a little bit. So I'm, I'm actually just going to talk about Denver right now to win the championship is minus 180 on DraftKings. That's the best place to get it outside of, uh, you know, there's a couple other things like Bet365, whatever, some stuff that's not legit, right? But the, the DK offer here for minus 180 for DraftKings uh, is pretty sweet and I'm playing it like a stock Nate like I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm going okay it was two minus 280 before Boston won their first game of the series for Denver to win the championship uh, which you'll recall was when they were already the only team in the championship at that point um, then when Boston won this last game it went down to uh, before um, after they won game one it went down to minus 220 they just won game two did Boston now it's at minus 180, right? It's dropping consistently because of the fact that like the team that is going to receive similar odds to win the championship if they make it there to Denver is Boston. If Boston makes a championship and they just won for the first time ever, they're coming off four games in a row, the world is looking at them like, holy crap, this team was blessed by the gods apparently, um, You know, then this is going to be very close to even money for both teams. Uh, but if Boston doesn't get there, the minute that Miami wins their fourth game in this series... What do we look at? Minus 500 for, for, you know, minus 400. Like it was minus 500 for, for Boston to beat Miami. I would say Denver's a little bit better than Boston, but that's my personal opinion. Um, and, and, you know, and the numbers say that. But the, the idea that they would be, that Denver would be anywhere, you know, less than that is crazy because they're basically Boston. So we know that with precedence, it's probably like minus 500 for, for Denver if they're playing Miami in the series, meaning it's not getting any better than minus 180. And it's only going to keep going up. So I'm kind of playing it like a stock because I've resigned myself to the fact that Denver's winning the championship. I decided that when I put like five units on them at plus two, uh, 240 to win the chip uh, before they started the series versus the Lakers. And when I saw it, I already was feeling very good about it. Um, so at this point, like like I said, it's just kind of like a stock that I have faith in that I'm watching uh, become more and more of a, of a b- b- increase in value for me because others are devaluing it. So I can continue to buy this stock uh, at a really good price as it continues to, to raise in my favor. And then by the time it gets to the finals, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to bet it again if, if Miami does make it to the finals. And if Boston makes it to the finals... I'll probably have another opportunity at even money. So we'll see how I continue to do it. I'm not saying I'm just like tossing units all over the place here. But like I said, this is something I believe in. So I'm going to keep playing my Denver stock. No, oh, yeah, I bet it now. Bet it again. If Boston forces a game seven, bet it again before the NBA finals start. I don't care if the Celtics win four straight and, you know, there's shades of like, well, then the Red Sox swept the World Series after they did that. Well, that this is this ain't Cards. baseball. This is ain't baseball. Yeah. You've got the best player in the world, well-rested, on the Nuggets, you've got a 14-year veteran coach who, you know, actually has all these pieces. Like, it's like Eric Spolster is playing with half a chessboard. Mike Malone has anything he wants to throw at you. And then he's got the on, most yeah. smartest, best player in the offense on the offense to execute it all. And so there's absolutely no way Boston is beating Denver. And I think you can, get, you can jump on those odds as soon as possible. I You said, I'm not throwing units everywhere. I, I would, Sure. Five units, like this is this is as close to a sure thing as you get. I didn't, you know, I find with kicking yourself for not getting it at plus four fifty or plus eight eight fifty or when they're playing Phoenix, because uh, yeah, the Nuggets are are winning the title. KCP, in fact, said we got four more games, not four more wins. <laughs> he thinks they're gonna sweep whoever they get. So uh, yeah, very confident. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm not, what I'm saying is, is like, I've got a bunch of units on the nuggets right now. Uh, I did hit them right before the second round series. I hit them right before they won the conference finals. Um, and so I'm looking at a pretty decent amount of money on them already. Um, which is why, you know, I'm not necessarily saying I, but I am going to keep hitting that stock with one or two each time that it drops in my favor for sure. And, and yeah, I mean, I'll probably look at five or six, I bet like five and six would both be worth it for Denver in this game. If, if once we see if they're playing the Celtics, by the way, uh, if they are playing this, if they're playing the Celtics, then like five at plus money, six will probably be very good money as well. Cause that would mean they'd have to win on the road. Um, and then, you know, you look at, uh, the, the, them playing the heat and it's like, Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, the, the Celtics would actually have home court. Would they not? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so actually, yeah. Game five would be them on the road, which would be really good money. And then six would be bet worse odds. Cause they'd be winning at home, uh, against the Celtics. But like I said, I'm going to be looking at some correct series. I'll save that 
for moving forward. But I just wanted everyone to know that uh, I'm, I'm playing Denver stock right now. Uh, and that's my best bet as I use it, you know, based on what's happening in the Celtics and Heat series as well. So that's all the time we have for you in the best bets video. Continue to follow along, like, and subscribe. Check out the play up props we also have up for you in our other video for game six. And until we see you next, maybe for a game seven, happy betting.